Today I want to show you how to set up Nagios, which is a network monitoring tool that can come in handy when you have multiple computers or, or servers to monitor. You can actually monitor printers, websites, there's many things you can actually do which is, is very nice. Uh, there's a lot of tools or plugins that will let you do a lot of far things beyond. I mean, for example, I on my Nagio setup, I can actually monitor blacklists so I can see if any of our sites at work get on a blacklist. So let's go ahead and get going here. Now I am running Ubuntu 9.10 in a virtual machine. You can in fact uh, do this on 9.04 and um, I've never tried it beyond or earlier than 9.04. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to just want to do an app get update to just make sure we have everything up to date. Our package manager is up to date. Connection's a little slow this morning. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do an app get install Nagios 3. And we're just going to go ahead and hit yes. Let me just pause this while that's installing. Okay, so during the install here, it's going to talk about the postfix configuration. Now, one of the things Nagios can do is when there's a problem or a concern, a warning, or a critical situation, it's set up to send an email. Now, if you're not into this, you can really you can go with no configuration. If you have mail set up on the box you're setting Nagios up, you could do local. If you want to send it to a Gmail or you know another type of email address, you want to use either internet site or internet with smart host. The difference between these is internet with smart host is, let's say you want to use Gmail's mail server to send the email you would want to select this. If you want to just use your local box to do it and open up the the required ports then or firewalls, then you can do internet site. So we're just going to do internet site. It's going to ask you for a fully qualified domain name. Now, I'm just going to what I do here is I'm just going to put in my jcwebconcepts.net And now it's going to ask you for the Nagios user, what do you want the password to be? So we're going to go ahead and put the password in. And we will confirm it. Now it's going to take those settings. Again, it, it all depends. The way spam goes, you know, setting it up with smart host might be a good idea. If you're not into configurations and you don't want to deal with the headache, it's a good way. If not, this is a good way. So right now it's creating the Nagios plugin config files. These files here you're seeing right here, you never really mess with. I've never gone in to mess with any of these files. So while this is just finishing up, 
Okay, well, we are now done. So now what we're going to want to do is we need to edit the CGI file. So I'm going to load up Vim because this is going to be the best one to do this in. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to look want to look for authorized for system information. It's not that far down, so I'm just going to scroll down and find it. Here it is. Okay. Now, you have a choice. You could leave this as Nagios admin or you can change it. Now, I, for my sake, I like to change it. Now, if you're going to change it, you have to change it in several places. So this is why I said Vim would be, or VIM, excuse me, would be a better choice. So what we're going to do is we're going to do shift, we're going to bring in the colon, percent space S forward slash, Nagios admin forward slash I'm gonna change it to Nagios space or forward slash G. So now that goes through, finds all the instances of Nagios admin and changes it to Nagios. So right here it tells us there were seven substitutions on seven lines. So let's go ahead and Save the file, and we're going to want to CD into that Nagios3 directory, and we're going to want to do a sudo ht password create ht password dot users Nagios. Now that is due to the fact we changed the username. Or excuse me, this is something you'd want to do for all users, even if you kept it the same. That's my fault. So now you're going to want to go ahead and type in the password and confirm it. And now we are going to want to restart Nagios. And... Let's just quickly do an ifconfig. My IP address is 110. Nagios3. You're going to be prompted for a password. So we're going to go ahead and type in Nagios. And type in my password. And here is Nagios. So, now the one thing that I'm just going to quickly show you is if you cd into the config.d file. Now, these are, these are basically where you would set up your configs. And if you look at this, let's look at this vim, actually sudo vim localhost basically what I like to do is use this as a template I usually copy these overs copy them over excuse me and you basically edit the address this address here is the address of what machine you want to monitor and the uh, Elias would be what you would want to name the name this here needs to match that first part of the underscore. So if this said Bob, this would have to be Bob underscore Nagios. And host name is whatever the host name of the box is. So, the one last thing I'm going to show you is this file here, the contacts. You would define a contact. This is already set up. Here you would want to change this email line, this root at localhost. You would want to change that 
to whatever email address you want. And it will, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it will email you any warning, um, uh, undefined, critical, um, or resolved. So, basically, you can, uh, what I did in mine is I created another one that only gave me critical and recovery and it sent an email to my cell phone. So that's about it uh, for this tutorial. Uh, in the future, I might have some tutorials with some more advanced things with Nagios, but for now, I think just getting it set up, a lot of people have had issues doing that. So um, hopefully this has helped, and thank you.